Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I have a super exciting episode today. I'm excited because it's a topic that I love to hate. Admittedly, if you are a subscriber of this show, you follow along, you know how I feel about the U in Harmonious, and that stands for ubiquity, which is sales and marketing. But it's an interesting conversation and a perspective that I have not shared from any other guests on this show, and I've actually never heard anyone else talk about in the real world. So I'm super excited to dive in, but let's just ground in the architecture real quick. Where are we? Harmonious is the 10 letter acronym for the 10 fundamental disciplines that every single business on the planet needs to master in order to grow, scale, and thrive in business. And it's not just knowing them and mastering them, it's how they interact with each other. So we're going to talk about marketing today, but I'll also highlight what other sections and disciplines in the architecture that are important that we're talking about. And we're going to dive over to the other side of business, which is mindset and your body, the three-legged stool of business, mind-body business. Fascinating conversation. I'm so excited. Let me welcome my amazing guest, Anna. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about this conversation. I do love to hate marketing, but you have a totally different approach. So I can tell we're just going to be best friends by the end of this episode. I hope so. so. Tell, tell the audience real quick, what, what is it that you do in the world of marketing? Yeah, of course. So um, I have a business called Dreaming Big Lifestyle. And what I do is business coaching and I'm a marketing strategist. So I also do a lot of marketing work primarily for service-based businesses that are run by females. Normally they're solopreneurs or entrepreneurs of small teams. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I think what we're going to learn a lot from this conversation is that it doesn't really matter what your business looks like. This is present in all business, all businesses, all sizes of business. It's the mindset and how you approach your marketing and how those two tie together. So um, I love that that's your specialty and that's your clientele, but pay attention, take notes. I think we're going to, we're going to resonate or hit on some things that resonate with you listening or watching out there. Um, so that's what you do now, but I'm curious, how did you come to this market and ultimately land on mindset and marketing? It's a unique niche. It is. It, it's quite unique in the sense that a lot of people don't put it together that way. But I think everyone in the back of their minds has mindset in their mind. <laughs> Funny way of saying it. But how I walked into this was I've been in the marketing world for over 10 years. And in working with small business owners, a lot of them larger companies, but still considered small business in terms of their revenue. Um, working with those business owners, I realized that they come to us for marketing necessities, but the conversations tend to be around business and business planning and business strategy and business tactics, and then the marketing can take place. So in learning this and realizing, okay, is there a gap out there? Like, why is no one connecting the business to the marketing and helping these business owners? And that's really how I began my business. And in doing so, and in starting my own business, I realized, even though I'm saying business a lot here, I realized that mindset was such a key part of that because to be honest, nowadays with the digital world, anyone can start a business, but if you don't have the mindset behind it, you're going to walk away from it so quickly because you're wearing so many different hats. You're stepping very far outside your comfort zone and you're becoming very vulnerable when you're a business owner sharing your knowledge. You don't even have to share your personal life, but it's a very vulnerable experience because some people may not accept it the way that you want them to. Yeah. And the internet's full of big meanies. We're going to yeah. mean things about my videos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the world we live in. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it is. But it's okay. We can tolerate the meanies. Um, but it's interesting you said that, though, because I I think I did what you said all these other nasty people did. I separated mindset and business in, in the intro. I said it's a three-legged stool, mind, body, business. And while they are obviously integrated, how do you look at integrating the mindset with the business and the marketing? Like what's your process around that? Great question. And I'll phrase it this way. I always tell my clients, you need to have a plan because motivation, it comes one day, gone the other. You really need discipline. And the only way that you can do that is by having a plan. And then your marketing falls underneath that. So like your plan is I'm going to promote this service and these are the channels I want to be present on. These are the newsletters I want to send out, like your marketing tactics. And then where your mindset comes into play is that really, although there's, you know, 
new trends coming out in marketing, new trends coming out in business, new things you could be selling or how to make money so quickly. You know, all these things that come up on social media, like I see them all the time, make 10K in 30 days. I'm like, okay, but like, what's the numbers behind that? And how long have you been doing this for? Like, is it because you've had a business for five years and now selling a product is so easy in 30 days? Like, what are we talking about? But the point being is that regardless of the strategy that you put into place and the marketing that you take action on, whether that's Facebook ads, organic Instagram, whatever that looks like, if you don't think it's going to work for you, it is not going to work for you. Your mindset is the key to these things working because then you can approach it, you can try it out, you can learn from it, pick up the lessons, the things that worked that didn't work, and then restructure that strategy to actually benefit you. Because a lot of times we're hopping on trends or we feel like we're fighting the algorithm or whatever that looks like for each individual person. And then we back away, you know, like I tried it, wasn't for me, let me move on to the next strategy. And that's where your mindset needs to be like, no, 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 let's see this through. Let's give it at least 30 days, 21 days, 15 days, set a goal for yourself. What did you learn from it? What worked? What didn't work? Was it because you didn't show up every day like you said you were going to? Or is it simply that this strategy doesn't work for your ideal client? And again, your mindset needs to be present for all these because otherwise you don't know how to ask yourself these questions. And then you can't adjust. Yeah, and it's a mindset of improving, not just winning or losing. Yes. Right. That That's what's really coming through with, with how you're explaining that. Yeah, 100%. What I say to people is you you always fail, and it's a bad way of saying this, but like you always fail because you never identify what success looks like. Hmm. So if you don't know what success looks like, how are you going to reach that? Like if you're going to try a new marketing strategy and you haven't identified what the success looks like, like is it that you want to get new followers to your account? Is it that you actually want to make sales? Is it that what does a success look like? Is it actually just sticking to the strategy for 15 days? Because if you do that, you're successful. And as soon as you hit that, this whole idea of like, I failed because I didn't get new clients, but your original goal was to just get more followers and you accomplish that. Like it changes everything for you because now failure isn't such a negative word. It's like, no, 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 I'm not failing. I'm, I'm learning. And that's when your mindset comes into place because it's so easy for us to talk ourselves out of the game. It's so easy for us to see someone asking for the service that you offer and not even putting yourself in the game to try to win that client over because your mindset is saying, that's not for me. Or, you know, I'm like focused over here on this strategy, so I'm not even going to pitch myself over there. Mm. Yeah, that's that's huge. And what we see a lot with our clients when they first approach us, whether it's to work one on one or, or join our mastermind is a some level of chaos on their in their calendars in their lives whatever it may be they're firefighting you know the typical business owner stuff that we all think is is normal the other thing we see is in their marketing in the ubiquity as we call it it's hopping from trend to trend tactic to tactic i tried facebook ads i tried billboards i tried door to door i tried whatever it is and there's never any follow through there there's never any like and and then we ask of course as our coo brains like okay what were the metrics behind it what were you measuring what are you what are you tying that to what's your ideal avatar and they're like i don't know but the ad didn't work yeah yeah <laughs> how, how could you possibly have effective marketing if you just throw things out there and, but that's the approach that most people take most small business owners in particular to all of their sales uh -huh. and marketing which is insane yeah the main mindset thing is like are you planting this to be successful and a lot of the times we're not doing that because like you said we're playing like whack-a-mole like we're just trying all these different things and hoping one of them sticks and makes us go viral and now we're rich which is unfortunately not how it works for everyone <laughs> unfortunately that requires a lot of discipline and a lot of time dedication to go viral just saying um but it's like you're planting these seeds and you're not even like watering the plant you're not putting it by the window to get some sunlight you're not doing anything to actually help it grow like you automatically are deciding that this is not going to be successful but I'm going to do it anyways because you know my coach told me to because I listened to this and Anna said that I should no like you need to actually believe that it's going to work for you and sometimes you don't have that answer and the only way that you can is by actually putting in the work 
and seeing what comes out of it. Because a lot of the times when you put in the work is when you start getting those answers. When you take that first step, you can see the second and the third, but you can't from not actually moving forward. And again, that comes down to the mindset. Like, are you actually taking the steps? Like, why are you not? Why are you self-sabotaging? Why do you think this isn't going to work for you? Yeah, that's <laughs> so many, so many points there to dissect that <laughs> I absolutely love. But like you said too, about going viral, like people think it's, that's, that's their ticket. It's just, I need to make a video that goes viral. And then that's my big break. But then look at the rest of the chain. It's like, okay, what, how about your profile? Is it optimized? Is it, are, are you, is the landing page going to convert people from leads to sales, to conversations, whatever that may be for you? Yeah. I mean, it's the whole process that you have to look at. So again, people are still, they're narrowed in on one thing, one tactic, one trend. They never get to that second level of strategy. I mean, me personally, like I, I, I want to go viral on TikTok. I can't seem to figure it out. I've never gotten on and, and shake my butt on a video. Maybe that's, should I do that? Is that what you're recommending? <laughs> uh, only if that feels natural to you, you know, it like does actually. Okay. So well, let's start. Gonna, with... Yes. Okay. Then you're holding yourself back for no reason. I'm not authentically showing up as me. See, be yes. you, be authentic. Yes. Yes. You know, there's like a thousand people, if not more that have the same business that I have, that you have, that everyone has. So what makes a difference is you. And if it's trending right now to do dance videos, should you go and do that? Not if you feel awkward doing it, not if it's not something you normally wouldn't do, not if it's like not authentic to you and doesn't resonate with you, because if it doesn't resonate with you, it's not going to resonate with your ideal client. So don't go on there. But one thing as you were mentioning that that came to mind is I'm a true believer in your business is meant to support your lifestyle. Like it's not the other way around. So if your goal is to go viral, like why do you want to go viral? Is it because you want to be rich? Okay, what do you classify as rich? How much money is that? And how does that change your life? Because if it doesn't change your life, you're not gonna, like, why would you do it? If it doesn't change your life, why would you do anything really? Like, why would you put yourself into starting and running a business and wearing all these hats when you don't really care and it doesn't actually change your life? And you could just be sitting pretty at home, like watching that paycheck come in every two weeks or every month, like take the easy way out. Okay. Take the easy way out. And that's a nine to five job. If you don't want to make your life a priority. Now, if you want your life to be a priority, start having your own business and your own source of income is amazing for that, but you have to have the mindset for it because otherwise you're going to take yourself right out of the game. All right. So full disclosure issues. I'm in the middle of some sort of a tornado warning, but Business must go on, and so shall the conversation about shaking your butt on TikTok. I swear that's the last time I'm going to reference that on this episode. But one thing I do want to mention is I had that same conversation where before we got cut off with someone else recording another Harmonies at Lunch earlier today, and that was about actually being in business and what it takes to survive and thrive, and it's way easier just to go get a job. So I, I think there's a lot to be said there. Do you ever, I mean, do you ever cross that bridge with your clients when you're first working with them about what they really want in business? Yes. So as soon as I start working with a new client, my question is like, what are your lifestyle goals? Like your dream life, what does that look like? And what do you see yourself doing day to day? Because I've had people come to me and say, I want to open up a store, but I want to live half the year in another country. And I'm like, well, that's not going to work if you want to have a store unless you are willing to train a whole bunch of amazing staff to work it for you because that's not going to support the lifestyle of you not being in the country when you have a brick and mortar store so it's definitely a starter conversation yeah i think i think that's really important especially as you you tie mindset into things and mindset lifestyle your your beliefs about what your business could be it's this is such an important conversation i'm glad you you tie the two together again most yeah. people I know don't and and it this doesn't even cross their mind. So this is this is such a cool conversation. Now I want to I want to tie this to the architecture real quick and then um, learn where people can work with you, find more about you. But so we started this by saying it was a conversation about ubiquity, which for us at What If is sales and marketing. We put those in the same bucket because if you believe that sales is separate than marketing, you're you're a little crazy. But that's conversation for a different day. Um, we'll we'll break down that belief system later. So we're in ubiquity, but what else are we talking about? We're obviously talking about mindset, but 
we have to talk about a number of the other disciplines at the same time. We just hit on serenity. How does your time management, what does your calendar look like? Are you doing the right activities to get the best output? Or are you just being busy, being busy? That obviously plays into your marketing. And then, of course, the, the A, which is analyze your metrics, the numbers behind your marketing, and the tactics and all of the, the different things that you could do, understanding what's working, what's not, how do you optimize that so that your marketing is working, your serenity is working, and your mindset is in favor of where you want to go in business. So that's just a couple of the connections. There are many, many more. We don't have a lot of time to dive deep into that. And of course, we are battling internet issues and severe weather storms and whatever else is going on here. So enough about that. But Anna, this is a really cool conversation. Um, I, I wish we could continue the conversation. But for those of you listening and watching, you can. I'm going to put your website on the screen here. Um, tell me what you have available on your website and how people can get in touch with you. Yeah, for sure. So first of all, my website, you'll find access to all my social media channels. Dreaming Big Lifestyle is my handle on whatever platform you're on. So you can follow me on there. And on my website, I have freebies <laughs> under my resources section, one of which is a 14 day, if I'm not mistaken, mindset challenge. And then I also have a business challenge on there as well where when you signed up, you get prompts in your email every day for the 14 or 10 days uh, to help you kind of build your mindset around this and also to help you get more clients, which that's the business challenge one and the mindset is the mindset one. And I just wanted to say one last thing in terms of giving an additional example to the mindset and business. When we're talking about the TikTok and shaking your butt, even though we said we weren't gonna talk about it Shake anymore. It me, don't yell at me. <laughs> No, it's okay. It's okay. So I just uh, wanted to say that the mindset comes into play where you feel like you can't do that video because people are going to judge you. But the mindset is, well, what if that video gets you like 10K dollars in the bank? Like, why wouldn't you do that video? That's where your mindset comes into play. And I think that's an example that a lot of people can grab onto when it comes to like, what if that's the video that makes you go viral? The one that's silly and true to you and like, most of your close family is going to judge you if it's not successful. But if it is successful, they're going to ask you how you did it. Like those are the ones that are going to set you apart. Hmm. What if? What a powerful question. Someone should name their company that. Oh, yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> what if every great thing in business starts with first asking the question, what if? What if this could work? What if Anna is the resource you need to maximize your marketing input? I, I absolutely love this. Thank you again for coming on the show. Um, and, and having this semi-interrupted, but very, very important conversation. I do want to ask you one last question. Um, your website's on the screen. So if you're watching, it's right there. It, wherever you're watching and listening, it will be in the show notes. Um, but I want to ask you, so the marketing expert, you just listed three freebies in two different categories. So you have a PDF and two challenges. Can you tell us and educate the audience a little bit of why you went with those tactics for your marketing? Sure. So no matter what business you're in, you want some sort of lead magnet, meaning something that allows you to acquire people's information so that you can be in their inboxes. A lot of people like challenges because they feel like I need a challenge right now to get me motivated and back into it. The ones that are PDFs are more like I'm going to take it and work on this on myself. So it's really about your ideal client and understanding their needs. Sometimes they are attracted to different kinds of way of doing things, which is why I have options. But you always want to have a lead magnet because social media can come and go. People's accounts get deleted all the time. And people's inboxes, their emails are almost like a sanctuary of selected information that they want to acquire. So as soon as you get access to someone's inbox, it's a big jackpot. It's a huge score because they are telling you that I want to learn more about your business and what you have to say about these topics. So get inside people's inboxes, their emails. The best way to do that is by having something free that requires people to put in their personal information to get access to it. I love it. There's a marketing masterclass for you right there. I'm, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but that was a fantastic answer. And I love your explanation. Um, so for those of you listening, watching, wherever you are, thank you for joining, first of all. And Anna, thank you for coming on the show. Make sure you subscribe, you comment. What are your takeaways? I want to hear. We want to hear what you got from this episode. And then, of course, go put it into action. 
figure out what's holding you back. What's the mindset that's preventing you from accelerating your marketing and your business to the next level? Of course, go to Anna's website, dreaminglifestyle.com. Take that next step. Go get the lead magnet. Go take the challenge. And we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for joining. Thank you. I don't know why it's not stuck.